life takes on a different meaning when you're looking at it from a short-term perspective. When you are, say, facing imminent death or utter destruction, you have the right to look at life and to state. I live my life a quarter mile at a time. Unfortunately, though, when you're in charge of steering the world's largest and most productive economic engine, you can't go all fast and the furious, hitting the gnaws over and over again. Why has the United States been the world's most innovative country and the biggest producer? How was this dynamic economic engine built? Well, the United States had a major advantage after World War II because it was the only westernized country, absent, say, Canada, which is just in reality America Jr., whose infrastructure hadn't actively been destroyed that wasn't dealing with millions of deaths that had taken place in their lands. Also, it's because the United States didn't employ a lot of rules on the developments of its economy. And there was a lot of room to grow because anybody that was unhappy with their current conditions could always say, I'm moving out west to try my luck as a prospector or in some various other form. And then you also had all those who were seeking life in the new frontier, in a better place, whose lands offered more freedoms and security. And I'm not talking only about your average worker that came here for a better life. We are also speaking of the big, humongous brains that drive true innovation. And we're talking about Oppenheimer, Albert Einstein, Sergey Brin, whose parents came here from the Soviet Union, and Elon, my hero, Musk. This brain drain still continues to this day where the most gifted from the foreign lands are coming here to where their work will be rewarded disproportionately and by more than just a pat on the back by the ruling elite, or if they consider them a threat, a bullet to the back of the head. Just take a look at Elon Musk, who came to the States specifically because this would be the location, where the area where he could most easily innovate and succeed. It was like a magnet that drew him in, as it does for the other big brains. Elon Musk, in turn, attracts many, many successful engineers that just want to work for him. And this benefits the entire world, but it benefits America and the people who live here disproportionately. This is why I find it so upsetting that the left-hand side of the aisle is slowly trying to kill the goose that lays the golden egg. <laughs> they want to put red tape over everything. They want to give out contracts based on hiring practices and racial quotas and equity rather than on merit. They want to raise taxes on everybody, making it less likely that people are going to come here for the rewards that are going to disproportionately start to go to government and government waste, of course, as well as making it more likely that corporations are going to start moving offshore. For example, many tech companies, there's rumors, for example, that PayPal will be moving its headquarters to Singapore, in part because of taxes. They want to keep printing an endless supply of American dollars, threatening one of the major competitive advantages that the United States has, which is, of course, being the world's reserve currency. How big of an advantage is it and how does it manifest? Go to any other country where you have impoverished people and see what the store of value is aside of gold, what they stuff underneath their mattresses. I'm going to assure you it's not Russian rubles. Ask anybody around the world who has experienced a currency devaluation, which, by the way, is a more common occurrence than you might imagine. And they'll take your U.S. dollars with gratitude and hold on to them for years, even if they lose some value due to the inflation that we normally experience, because would you rather get paid in U.S. dollars or the Argentinian peso? With the COVID epidemic and the initial lockdown, the government actually rightly probably, printed and distributed money to avoid massive economic pain and despair. And this 
in fairness, was likely the correct course of action to take when people were first shut out of their jobs. But unfortunately, when you give the government something, it's like giving a little toddler a toy, a shiny new toy that they don't want to let go of. And the leftist politicians with no adults in the room have decided to keep hitting the NAS. Yes, the United States does have the world's strongest economic engine, but if Dementia Joe keeps hitting the button with his enabling band of senior abusers, the engine of the United States is going to start to burn and to fall apart. Like the engine of any car when you repeatedly subject it to the effects of burning nitrous oxide. Now let's say you have a house on the corner that costs a million dollars. Democrats, being so caring, so good, decide that they're going to put $2 million into every single bank account around the world. What is the price of that house going to be now? I just literally gave everybody $2 million that no one did anything to produce to create. It's no different than flooding the world with monopoly money, other than the fact that the rest of the planet still believes that the U.S. monopoly money has value, likely backed by our aircraft carriers. Question, how quickly will the price of this house increase? Is it super quickly or is it instantaneously? Don't you think that everybody is going to look for a place in a real asset that has real value as a way to protect the funny money that they've been given to have that have some permanent value? It also means for all those who diligently saved 500,000 US dollars over their lifetime has seen that value eroded in one small push of the button. Printing this funny money is a nuclear bomb to savings. It's why the prices of assets with a fixed and limited supply have increased in value tremendously. I'm talking about things like artwork, housing, Bitcoin, even commodities, which also have a limited supply. For example, precious metals have increased and they are doing so to protect the savings that one has accumulated from the spendthrifts that are looking to waste the money of others. The unfortunate truth is that today's modern day politician, especially those on the left, would rather keep hitting the gnaws over and over again and worry about the amazing economic engine that they destroyed at a later date. Winter is coming. And the first snowflakes to alight upon the soil of the United States and then the world will be the confetti of burned up U.S. dollars as the Democrats continue to punch the gnaws. Amateurs don't use nitrous oxide. I've seen the way you drive. You got a heavy foot. You'll blow yourself to pieces. And as the economic engine, which has towed the world forward towards the land of prosperity and plenty, is being actively destroyed for short-term political gain. We are hitting the gnaws way too much. And the economic engine, as I mentioned, is going to be destroyed. Peace out.